So Hassan Piker, Hassan Abi, um, the live streamer, has been in a bit of hot bother recently because he basically said that live streaming is just as difficult as a job as regular working a regular job it's just as tiring just as much even harder whatever it may be right and people really got their panties in twist got irate got mad about it because rightfully so it's an idiotic statement to make so i'm going to play the clip of what he said and then i'm going to react to it myself yes a real job can be gruesome a real job can make you very tired but a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you you know what i mean in the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will one more time. Yes, a real job can be gruesome. A real job can make you very tired. But a real job doesn't suck the soul out of you. You know what I mean? In the same way that nine hours of streaming absolutely will. I don't really understand why these streamers go out of their way to talk about this stuff. Because I don't think this is the first time I've heard it. I'm sure I've heard from other people too. They have this same sort of adage and I think I've heard it from, and again, this is probably a bad example, but I've heard it from the likes of like Wings of Redemption, the DSPs, Dark Side Fields. I've heard this common sort of like saying being said a lot to about, about these guys and I really don't understand why because it's a weird one because a lot of these guys have had, have had, no, most of those guys I've spoke about or most live streamers I think of have had to work regular jobs. There are some live streamers that obviously come from money and shit, but the majority of them have had to work a real job in order to, you know, pursue their dream of making as a YouTuber, making as a Twitch streamer, whatever it may be. Everyone's kind of had to do that. I feel like personally, I think the majority of us have had to do it. So I feel like if the majority of us have had to do it, regardless if you worked in an office or wherever you worked at, you would know how grueling having a job is that you don't give a fuck about on your mind, on your mental on your fucking physiology in terms of your being every day having to go to a job that you don't give a fuck about and you're only doing it solely for the money it takes something out of you that nothing a nine hour stream could ever replicate we should all know that we've all been in that situation and it's not like you know i don't want to get on here and start saying oh i've had harder jobs than you and all this sort of dunking and shit that's not necessary but i feel like the majority of people online the majority of people who make content online have had to go through that experience where you're legitimately working a job solely for them to pay you at the end of the month so that you can pay your rent, maybe buy new equipment or whatever it may be. But that's all you're doing it for. You don't care about the job. You don't, you're not passionate about the product. You don't care about the service. You don't care about the customers. You don't care about anything. You're just doing it for the money. And if that's the case, you should know those type of jobs, forget the actual work that you do being tiring and exhausting sometimes it's the people that you work with and i repeat that again forget about the how monotonous the job is the, the job is horrible you're picking and packing in the warehouse you're doing fucking door-to-door -door signups and shit you're walking in a course call center you're working in a stock room you're doing retail coffee shop and um, fast food chain i know all terrible but sometimes the jobs aren't even that bad it's actually the people that you have to work with on a daily basis it's even made worse if the people that you work with you don't like or they don't like you or you just butt heads or you don't get along or there's a culture clash or there's a fucking age difference that just isn't easy to kind of mend. Those things can be really exhausting and I've been in situations before. I've worked in places where the job is pretty decent, you don't mind it, but legitimately the thing that makes your heart sink before you walk into the door is thinking, oh, you're going to see that person that you don't like the manager that you hate um the fucking um supervisor that's got the, that's got a vendetta against you these things that you can't really help control or kind of you know resolve in any way because you're just a lowly employee those things will really fuck with you and sometimes those things will go with you home sometimes you'll be thinking about shit before you like i remember sometimes working certain jobs where you're already depressed saturday afternoon saturday afternoon you're already depressed because you know the evening's coming, you know next day's Sunday, and the following day's Monday, you have to get back to work again. You're already depressed by Saturday afternoon. I remember working those kind of jobs. You're super giddy on a Friday, and then suddenly it's Saturday afternoon, you're fucking depressed because you don't want to get to work. I don't think streaming or making content has ever made anybody feel that way. Unless you're Wings of Redemption and you're a fucking, you know, redacted low cow who's, you know, allergic to working hard, who doesn't want to have any responsibilities, who just wants to do things the easy way and get the most out of life without having to do anything, right? Those people do exist, fair enough. But regular people like you and I, 
regular well, well adjusted people like sometimes <laughs> that type of shit can really take you out of you so i'm just shocked why these guys say these type of things i don't understand why because they know deep down that's not true they know deep down that streaming has never made them feel as bad as working a job has made you feel and even sometimes i've said it before like i think it's actually a curse i think it's actually a like um and like yeah it's actually a curse to be somebody that has like aspirations outside of your work i think i don't think it's a good thing like i think it can sometimes fuck up fuck with your head because i don't think we're all really honest about how difficult it is to actually make it and actually be a professional quote-unquote content creator not a lot of people get to do that it's a real privileged position it's a real rarity that people get to you know pay their bills um, look after their family by talking shit on the internet it's not easy to do so the fact that you have those type of dreams sometimes can fuck with your ability to keep a real job because you start to think about all the things that you could be doing with this time and not focusing on the work you got to do in the, on the nine to five that you're working that's actually paying you to you know to fucking that's actually paying your wage to keep a roof over your head and it can actually affect your ability to work properly and i've had that situation myself um it's only you know when i became a little bit older become a bit more mature i was able to really be honest about my situation my position and actually be a little bit more grown up with how i approach my jobs but for the longest time i was like really disrespectful to jobs i had and the disrespect i had to jobs was really affecting my performance and it affected my performance would affect my ability to connect to people working there and obviously just affect my overall mood so i was fucking over myself you know two times over by having these lofty aspirations about oh i don't really need this job i can get out i can do this whatever it's not a good thing so those type of feelings again only come about working a dead-end job working a job you don't really want so i don't know why people like hassan will say this even more so him because allegedly according to people online he comes from a wealthy family anyway so it's like why does it even matter that you'll have this appeal like why even share this if you've never really had to live or work within the real world like the rest of us like why is this even important because i'm not somebody i think this is a bad thing maybe i've been the minority here i don't think it's a bad thing to grow up wealthy I don't think it's a bad thing to grow up with parents that have money and the ability to basically, you know, let you take chances so you don't have to accrue, accrue debt, so you don't have to work a dead-end job. That's actually a good thing. That's a blessing. That's what your parents should want to do for you, for all the hard work they put in, right? That's one of the benefits of working really hard is that you have the ability now to help your kids out like later on in life because you didn't get that opportunity yourself. Cool, whatever. But I don't also understand why people that have money or that come from money try to larp like they're not from money or try to push away from that and then try to speak for us or speak about the, the regular working class experience where they've never been through it like there's something to be learned or gleaned from somebody that's lived a life of affluence and privilege you can probably learn a lot from them you can also learn a lot from somebody that's had to graph for everything they had and have worked you know has been a working class middle class type of person but pretending you are the opposite is really bizarre and kind of if anything i feel like does a disservice to your parents it's almost like spitting in the face of your parents all the hard work that they did and now here you are cosplaying as some like blue collar street it's like what and who even cares who's even keeping note about this sort of stuff no one really so you're kind of talking into the wind anyway but i find it all absolutely asinine and all absolutely dumb anyway um hassan did reply so I'm going to play this clip courtesy of the Abba and Preach podcast or its channel. I recommend you check them out. They're absolutely brilliant. I'm sure most of you guys know who they are. But they played a clip where Hassan kind of replied to all the pushback he was getting. And I get the feeling that Hassan Abi is just a bit of a, he's just a bit of a cunt in it, really, unfortunately. As much as I like his streams and I like his style and stuff, I feel like as a person, he's a bit of a dickhead. Like he's a bit of like, you can tell he's got that rich kid energy that we all don't like. There's rich kids that exist in the world who are amazing. I'm sure we've all had them. Where you've gone to school with a rich kid who was just incredible, super nice, super generous, and just a chill person. But I also feel like there's that rich, bratty type of kid like Hassan who's just, I don't know, he's just always going to be a rich brat. Even though he's like an older dude now, he just still acts like a child. So maybe that's part of the reason why people dislike him and what he says and shit. But he just comes across as somebody that just never doesn't get it, is really out of touch, but thinks he is in touch. It's odd. Anyway, let's play the response. Our favorite streamers are doubling down on the 
streaming is socially draining more than regular jobs. Mm. Hassan's unhappy. I canceled on Twitter again, oh, really? obviously, as always. Oh, fuck. Um, this time it was for me saying that I run out of my social battery after nine and a half hours of streaming in a way that, like, a real job doesn't. Uh-huh. Oh, God. Um, and, and everyone immediately, like, they... That's dumb, though, because a real job, there's way more... This is the stupidest, stupidest statement. You have... You go through way more of a social battery at a real job than ever you do streaming. I know streaming, there's a lot of demands with the live chat and interacting with that and alerts coming in, people suggesting things you should check up and stuff and keeping an eye on the time or you're always spending on each topic. I understand there's a lot going on there. But let's be real. Having to talk to your colleagues like having to communicate with people that you work with collaborate blah 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 that's t that that social battery is like it's non-comparable to streaming there's no compare to it at all zero compare i've seen it myself like i don't even go to the office as much as i used to right because everybody's working from home now but more often not i'm sure most of you guys in the uk who do work from home you will know this if you have to work one day a week from work if you have to work one day a week in the office you've probably noticed how much talking gets done now as opposed to before because everybody's so excited to see each other you haven't seen each other you've all been at home doing your thing and then you get into the office and it just turns into like one big chat phone and by the time you finish work you probably the last thing you want to do is have another conversation so the idea that that is any way comparable to people talking to you on a live stream which you can just ignore if you want to right you don't even need to read it whereas in at work you kind of have to answer back you have to communicate you have to be alert you have to you have to always be present you can't go to sleep you can't just wander off your fucking stream and just like start making food you have to be there on the laptop talking you know like come on man come on Hassan. like you have to be serious I had a real job dumbass. i did i did i worked in sales so it was like a that's not the ex that's not again allegedly he worked in sales for two months it's not the same thing it's not the same thing you can't compare working two months at a sales job and use that as a way to generalize about how much social but like how, how what experience do you have is that all you have your only experience of like social battery being drained is working one time in sales come on brother a very social job as well so i know exactly what like yeah. people pleasing mm. looks like and it's like being annoying and awful right mm. so i was making a comparison between like my experience as a salesperson versus my experience as a twitch streamer and i was like it's so soul sucking like it's so soul crushing and i can't socialize after that and i feel so bad because i was talking about going to march's house march at a housewarming party none of you guys were invited I, these are he, not cool i was invited and i didn't remember until yesterday i was there right and i brought kaya and she was being the best girl but i also felt like i was looking like an asshole to every single person because i was like pouting the whole time i'm really fucking tired mm. i take one drink well, with it's march. always the hassan show <laughs> I, I take one drink with and i, was like, I have to get the out of here like I, i'm so i'm so she made a good point there though right he actually did think that everybody in there was noticing how it's like bro like this fucking main character energy this guy has is oh god almighty do you got hung over immediately yeah i think it's because like i'm tired after nine and a half hours of streaming right um they clipped it like 30 seconds of it to be like hassan streamer says dumb socialist streamer says like fucking real jobs are way easier than streaming and it's like that's not what i was saying here's the fucking context nobody gives a shit there's like hundreds of thousands of fucking it doesn't matter what the context is though even the context that he's adding to it about the social battery thing it's not true you have you you drain way more of your social battery working a regular job than you ever do streaming that is categorically incorrect what he's talking about like we know it working a regular job drains more of your social battery than streaming would ever do plus streaming you choose to do it it's not something that you have to do you don't have to stream this is all just like a game privilege type of thing that we're all involved in but it's not an obligation to stream you don't have to do this you do it because you want to do it whether you want to stream to talk to your fans stream to make money whatever it is or just to lend your voice to what's happening in the culture but it's not you're not obliged to do it in order to actually keep you on like it's just it's just a nonsense topic anyway it really is a nonsense topic likes led me to actually uh delete twitter what? i deleted twitter from my phone yeah it's really it's really important for me to have twitter imagine deleting twitter because you're getting pushback and whatever criticism and people are not agreeing with the hot take that you had that's why you delete twitter you can't even handle pushback you can't handle critique you can't handle debate you just delete your twitter that's is that the answer to fucking solving all your issues maybe don't say dumb shit
maybe have a little bit more life experience so that you can you know have something interesting to say maybe maybe chase that would that be so hard to do by the way if you're Hassan Abi and you're the socialist guy why wouldn't why doesn't he do live streams where he goes and works at places for a number of time like I don't know like you know the like undercover boss why does he do stuff like that why is he just sitting on his laptop talking to people and telling them how to live their lives while he's got a fucking, you know, while he's in his multi-million dollar mansion with an amazing car outside? Why doesn't he, why doesn't he do the whole, go all the way with this whole socialist LARP that he has going on and actually go and work a regular job to get some experience, to talk to people that work regular jobs and to actually understand what the regular people are saying, which would then, in a weird way, help his arguments politically, socially. That would actually help his debates, help his point of view. But no, here he is just like nonsing about nothing. Put her on my phone for my job. Obviously, I need to like constantly be fucking up to date on what the fuck's going on in the world. But I feel like at this point, it's just not worth it. It's it's so like being in, being on Twitter it's and being extremely out. online <laughs> yeah. is is literally like being in a room where you're making the dumbest people on the fucking planet yell at you nonstop so we're i love this i love this so we're the dumb ones because we don't agree with what you said you say streaming drains way more of your social battery than working a regular job or that streaming is a harder job than working a regular job we say no because there's way more people that's the thing as well there's way more people on planet earth working a regular job then there are people who make money online streaming the, i guess the majority of people don't even make money stream the majority of people don't even make a living streaming let alone money so oh, don't even make uh, money let alone a living so he's sitting here acting as if like the regular people online who amount for the majority of people in the world who all have jobs and enjoy content online still are the ones that are dumb and don't know what they're talking about cool great guy never met him <laughs> and so you're not using twitter ever again no no i, I no, he just took he'll it use off it, his phone he'll use it on his pc yeah i just i because i need to have it for my work but um but yeah, I'm not gonna because yeah. I. Oh yeah, I can't delete. That's the thing as well. I love people like this, right? They make these bold statements about deleting things and not being on here. It's like, yeah, I can't delete the whole thing though. I can't disappear. I gotta have a social presence. I gotta get my dopamine hit from somewhere. You've yeah. just been. I was like looking at it and it was like fucking me up. Well, yeah, you were up really late last night. No, I, I went to sleep at like eleven. I just woke up at four and I was like going through Twitter and I was just like, fuck this, dude. Uh, like, what the fuck am I doing? I also love the little lie. You was up late at night, weren't you? No, I went to bed at 11, but was up at 4. So you was up at 4 a.m. checking Twitter. <laughs> checking all the replies and people shouting at you and feeling bad for yourself. Good for you. Yeah. That's, that's, this is a positive step in your mental health. Yeah. Sometimes I'm, I wish there was a world where you could just like, mental like health if I could just up. like quit and restart as like a VTuber and be somebody totally different. Because yes. I feel like I've ruined so many first impressions and I've just made so many mistakes online that are just like micro... It's so funny you say that because like you did I just wish I could start over. But, you didn't, but you feel that way, and it feels very real to you. But like from where I'm standing, with uh, the amount of like genuine fucking hatred and vitriol that I have, I feel like yours is because you're a woman. That's no. It. Okay, whatever. I'm also really perplexed. Maybe it's just me and my tendency, or just over. I think I think sometimes I do try. I do overcompensate sometimes and try to be like a pleaser too much but sometimes i really do wonder how do people who are very divisive not know why they're so unlikable why is that a thing why do guys like hassan abi hassan Piker, who's incredibly unlikable says incredibly dumb things not understand why people don't like him has no concept of it whatsoever just thinks people everybody's dumb has no concept like it's not and again it's not like you don't it's not like you have to agree you don't have to change your behavior based on it but you should have an ability to understand why people don't like you like just objectively hey why do people not like me objectively i am quite unlikable objectively i do have a punchable face objectively i do have some crazy opinions about the world and how it should function objectively i do have some dumb hot takes objectively i don't have many life i don't have much life experiences yeah, you know I mean, like it should be a that should be a, a cornerstone. If you're somebody that comes from a questionable background, you should have that should be a part of your like how to describe it. That should be a part of your thing. That should be a part of your thing. Understanding why people don't like you, and then if anything, leaning into it a bit more. That's what I would do if I was him. Understand why people don't like you, but then lean into it to kind of serve your fucking ends and shit. But for some reason, he doesn't get it. Anyway, in the long and short of it. I think most of you listening and watching will probably know that working a regular job is way harder than making content online. 
that's not to say making content online isn't difficult i've long said i think um people like the kardashians even someone like a kylie jenner i think they deserve a lot more respect for the amount of content and stuff they put up online because it's not easy to be constantly like recording selfies of yourself taking pictures of yourself with different outfits on trying on different outfits different makeup all that stuff is exhausting i'm sure some of you have tried it before like hey every day i'm going to take a picture of my outfit it's not easy to do so it's no one saying it's easy to like be a content creator to be an influencer we're not all saying that it definitely has its own difficulties that you have to kind of combat and overcome and whatever it may be but to compare doing something that you're doing for the love you're doing something for the passion you're doing something because you want to share your voice your opinion get your whatever your style out there whatever it may be something that you feel like is a calling comparing that to working a regular job that you don't want because you're doing it to pay your bills is fucking insane especially if you've had to work a job like that ever in your life even once and again it's not to do like a competition about who's had the worst job and stuff but come on bro come on man let's be for real let's be for fucking real like i remember there was one time in particular talking about bad jobs actually one this one summer where i always had struggled to get jobs anyway i was just that kid like i think in general of my life i've just been that person i've never got things easy everything has always come with just hard slog i've never once got a single opportunity just given to me and again i wish i had one but i've never had it's always been just pure sweat and hard work one particular summer i was finding it hard to get like a regular retail job and at the time when we were kids that was what you'd want you'd want to work in like a jd sports a foot locker a sports direct so that you could get like free stuff right discounted stuff and also it was cool to work there when you were a kid i couldn't get those jobs for so love no money not happening so i ended up having to do this job where essentially i was getting sign ups from people like i was standing in like i think it might have been like i think it might have been like ilford or like barking or something right I was standing outside Ilford and Barking and they had these like, you know, like a strip, like a shopping area where everyone, there's all these shops to the high street. And I was standing in like the main square getting signatures from random people. I forgot, I don't even know what it was for, but I just remember I had to do that for the weekend. I did that from maybe Friday to Saturday um, for like eight hours per day trying to get particular signups. And if I remember correctly, it was a certain number. If you didn't get a certain number, you wouldn't get the minimum pay. I'm not lying. So if you didn't get a certain number of signatures, you wouldn't get the minimum pay. Not like you wouldn't get a bonus, even a minimum, you wouldn't get it. And the reason why that was so important at that time, I think I might have been like 17 or something. That job was the job that I used to get to to have, I, I wanted obviously. And the money I got from that was what would pay for my haircut, what would pay for my outfit for, for the rave on the weekend, or like money in my pocket to take some girl out and to the cinema or some shit. So that money was important. Like it was life or death because I wasn't getting at home, right? We were super broke at home. Um, didn't have any money at all. My parents were working super hard just to keep the lights on. So there was no extra money for me to buy trainers and shit. So I had to just get that on my own. And this is before I was into sneakers and resaying. So I didn't have no idea what I was doing. So I had to do that sign up job for like a good summer like doing that job, doing sign-ups, and it was brutal, horrendous. One of, the, one of the best jobs and one of the worst jobs I've ever had. Best because obviously you've got to be outside with your friends. Um, you got to talk to random girls sometimes, banter with some other people, but also the worst because you are literally getting sign-ups. Like you're literally standing there with a clipboard and I have my little suit on, my tie, like just an awful, awful job. And again, the money was like, I kid you not, it might have been like 50 in it might have been 50 but i think it was probably 30 pound a day i'm gonna say 50 to be like kind to myself but i think it was 30 pound a day i think we got like 30 or 35 pound a day working eight hours a day standing outside trying to get signatures and again if you didn't reach a certain amount of signatures you got no money no money zero so you had to get the signatures at the end so it was absolutely horrendous so anybody sitting there with a straight face saying doing what i'm doing now is harder than working that job i had before that's a bullshit that's absolute bullshit really really is but you know these guys just they have nothing to say they want to say things they want to say things